Hey friends of Panuka Farm, uh, this is yours truly, uh, Mr. Panuka, uh, live from you know Panuka Farm right here in Lusaka, uh, Zambia. So today we're not in the fields, um, we will get there later, but for now uh, we want to discuss some aspects of uh, you know farm planning. Um, one of the biggest you know issues um, that we need to indicate up front is that you know farming is not just dropping seeds and fertilizers you know in the soil and, and, and stuff like that. Um, the planning aspects, you know, uh, it's quite a very very critical you know component to you know farming. And um, unfortunately, I think it's an aspect that has been overlooked uh, by quite a number of especially you know upcoming you know farmers. Um, there's so much focus in you know just uh, planting the seeds and, and, and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to plow through uh, today uh, a few aspects, you know, of planning which we think are actually quite, uh, you know, critical. Uh, so let's dig in uh, with some of the details and then later on uh, we will actually get to the field just to appreciate uh, a few things about uh, farm planning. The best way to actually start any planning, you know, discussion is uh, to start with an avalanche, you know, of uh, idioms or sayings. So I think one of the dominant ones that we've actually had is that uh, failing to plan is actually planning uh, to fail. And uh, the end result of your failure to plan uh, could actually be construed to another, you know, very interesting, you know, idiom that actually, you know, says, you know, operating like a headless chicken. You know, it may sound sarcastic, but somehow it's actually quite punchy. Um, basically what it means is that if you don't plan, uh, you're bound to just begin, you know, operating anyhow and uh, it might actually be very difficult for you to see uh, any progress uh, on the farm. Okay, so let's dig in with a few you know, aspects of um, you know, uh, planning uh, surrounding these two idioms that we've just um, you know, uh, indicated. So, point number one is about having an office at the farm. Okay, now we know that farming actually happens in the fields, uh, and so if you're a macho man, uh, you might actually be arguing, saying, well, why should you have an office? Because that will promote, you know, laziness. You've got to be in the field and, and stuff like that. But if you're actually talking about kind of commercial, you know, uh, farming, uh, not necessarily in terms of size of land, but in just the way you do things, um, I think you actually need, you know, a farm office. Um, you know, there's a tendency for people to go to the farm, uh, just hover around, you know, a mango tree, um, you know, ask a few questions, you know, to the workers, go around the fields, and then from there, get into the vehicle and, and, and off you go. And I'm speaking in the context of, you know, farm ownership, mainly in Zambia, where people are actually in full-time employment. Um, and, and so you, you have to drive to go to the farm. Um, so you actually don't even have any office where some kind of planning can, can happen. Uh, so there's just that tendency to hover around. Um, and unfortunately, what that promotes is this issue of you just hanging around for a short time. Um, there's no room for, you know, planning. Even if you did planning, you actually do it, you know, at your home. Uh, and sometimes it's actually quite disconnected to the reality on the ground. So I think it's, it's very critical for you to actually have, you know, uh, an office at the farm. Uh, so that, you know, certain aspects of, of farm planning can actually happen, um, you know, uh, within that, you know, office. Uh, obviously, that doesn't mean that you've got to spend, you know, the whole time, you know, in the office. Um, but it's a very critical component, um, you know, of farm planning. So that as a team, you could actually assemble in your, you know, office, um, you have a few charts, uh, you know, that you could refer to and, and, and things like that. Talking about, um, you know, uh, aspects to refer to, uh, let me just show you, you know, some of the aspects that um, we actually use uh, for, um, you know, in terms of reference. In Mr. Panuka's office, of course, you know, have your computer where you input, you know, your crop, you know, forecasts where you input uh, the actual so that you actually do some kind of variance analysis, uh, you know, do an appraisal of how you're performing per quarter or over whatever period of time. So very, very critical, you know, for you to have a computer, but that computer must actually be functional uh, so that you can actually do some very good, you know, uh, analysis um, of, of your performance. Okay. Then um, you actually see right there we have a chart that shows our products, uh, our units, you know, of, uh, you know, measurement. Uh, if you're talking about English cucumber, you're talking about the cucumber, red pepper, we do it in cages. Uh, iceberg lettuce, it's about per head. Uh, and then we have the plan, you know, per week and plan, you know, uh, per month. 
So those are very critical, you know, reference, you know, um, you know, charts. Even when you're having a meeting with your staff, uh, doing an appraisal of how well they've performed, uh, we actually have that uh, in terms of plan, you know, per month, uh, so that then you also do your actuals and do uh, a variance analysis. So that is a very critical, you know, component of your uh, planning um, because that aids uh, your appraisal uh, of your um, performance on the farm and generally also for your uh, workforce. Um, the other issue is about the proximity of your office to the production areas. Unfortunately here, because the sun is coming from this direction, uh, I know the video is a bit blurred, but what you can actually see is that our greenhouses are right there and uh, where I'm seated here uh, in the office, I'm actually able to see what's going on uh, on the farm. Uh, so that's quite very critical uh, in terms of just exactly where you, um, you know, situate uh, your, your office. Then right behind me there, Right there, you can actually see those are some of our you know, fertilizer charts. Uh, we have another one, the other side. Uh, so again, you need to make sure that your office is actually surrounded with some very critical you know, sources of uh, you know, uh, reference uh, for your uh, performance. So the other critical component in terms of just um, you know, farm planning is this issue of having a weekly you know, work plan. Okay? Um, we'll show you exactly sometimes what are some of the issues that actually feed into your uh, weekly uh, work plan and, and how you arrive at that, okay? But this is very, very critical. Um, so let me just turn, you know, the, the camera around so that you can actually see the different components of this uh, uh, planning tool that we actually use on the farm. And the issue is that this planning tool is actually in the corridor where it's actually accessible by almost all the staff um, because this speaks to the core, you know, uh, activities uh, on the farm. So, um, you actually see that uh, this board of ours has a date, uh, and then you have Monday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all the way up to Sunday. Um, and then here we have um, the column for weekly tasks. Uh, and then here, we haven't just labeled it, but this is where we actually put some other, you know, ad hoc or imaging, you know, activities. And these other tasks, are basically, uh, the farm managers, you know, uh, interpretation of the weekly you know tasks and then assigning to individual uh, staff so you actually see that there are some names here uh, who's supposed to do the spraying the fertigation the watering and that is actually outlined um, for every day okay so that is very very critical so that you do not operate like a headless chicken like we indicated earlier uh, and so these are you know weekly tasks so today it's a Friday, um, and you actually see that what we have on Friday today is planting in GH7, that's greenhouse number seven. Uh, we also have some, you know, transplanting of lettuce uh, and also finalizing some land preparations in shed net number one. So what we'll actually do is that we take you around uh, in the fields. You actually see how we go about implementing some of these activities that are informed by our weekly, you know, work plan, and also how some adjustments are actually done. Uh, I'm aware that. Uh, the latest one, due to the cold, um, you know, the seedlings have not been growing uh, very quickly. So we'll have to make some adjustments for next week. So let's get into the field uh, so that you also get to appreciate exactly uh, what I'm talking about here. So like you saw on our weekly work plan, uh, transplanting of English cucumber is, uh, you know, uh, scheduled for today, uh, Friday. So in the morning, uh, like now, we just have to check whether the seedlings are ready um and uh, also here uh checking whether um you know the iceberg lettuce which is also on the schedule is ready uh, but like you can actually see uh, due to the cold um it has not been growing very fast so that's one of those you know adjustments that you've got to make um the sweet pepper also not yet you know ready uh this one we have to push it for another you know one week um so it's quite important for you to just uh, you know uh, check you know on the seedlings and see whether they are ready uh, for the day uh, so that you make you know the final touches in terms of uh, um, land preparations so this is just an aerial uh, view of our uh, nursery so based on the seedlings that you actually saw in our nursery um, that informs us you know uh, the pace at which you know we need to uh, make sure that the land is uh, uh, ready. Uh, so in here, uh, this is one of the destinations of, uh, you know, that uh, sweet pepper that you saw in the nursery. Um, and so in terms of planning for next week, um, certainly the pace at which the seedlings are growing, you know, kind of dictates um, what should be our focus, you know, for next week in terms of land preparation. So 
Uh, we actually earmarked that uh, we should be transplanting, you know, that sweet pepper next week on Friday. Uh, and so it means that, you know, the land in here uh, needs to be uh, finalized. Um, by now, you know the drill. Um, these are fertility trenches. So the process that we're actually going to go through uh, is to, you know, fill these, you know, fertility trenches with some farm residues, um, chicken manure, uh, and the like. Um, we must actually indicate that ideally, um, the chicken manure needs to be put, you know, way ahead uh, so that uh, the decomposition process is actually quite complete. Uh, but most of the manure that we'll actually be using uh, is one that has kind of been, you know, uh, uh, treated kind of ready. Uh, so uh, the waiting time uh, for it, you know, in the soil uh, is kind of minimal. Uh, but I think the ideal situation is that uh, we need to make sure that uh, we put, you know, the manure in here uh, together with the farm residues um, and then begin to water. It takes quite a while. Uh, for that to get uh, ready. Uh, so Yeah, there's what the books, you know, say and then there's also uh, the Reality on the ground uh, in terms of how you roll with um, issues of land preparations um, You know farming um, I would actually say 70% uh, practice and 30% uh, You know theory um, There's there's a lot of what you know action research will actually teach you uh, and so Basically, this is how we also do, um, you know, the planning uh, at the farm, uh, dictated by, you know, of course, the seedlings and everything else that's going on. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, you review what's going on and that, that informs uh, what you're going to do uh, for, for the uh, next week. So we do this every Friday, going around, uh, checking what's going on, um, and then we sit down and then come up with, uh, you know, the uh, work plan, you know, for the week. So here, this is our, you know, new uh, 400 square, you know, meter uh, shed net. Uh, you know, we have a resolve that uh, by December 2021, we need to migrate all the sweet pepper production uh, into either greenhouses or at least in the shed nets. Um, due to Sun Scout, we're actually migrating into, um, you know, this protected, you know, environments. Um, so here we've already transplanted some, uh, you know, sweet pepper. Uh, on the far end, we also have some slices of cucumber called meters. So uh, this is uh, the new uh, shed nets with uh, these new uh, crops inside. So next week, we transplant uh, more sweet pepper in here. So going around, just checking the state of you know the fields uh, helps just to you know make adjustments to uh, you know the uh, plant for the week. Um, so it's quite critical that uh, you move around the farm uh, just to see uh, what's going on. Uh, so like we indicated here in Zambia, it's actually getting cold now. This is May heading to June. Um, these are, you know, coldest, you know, uh, months uh, of the year. So naturally also you actually see that, uh, you know, uh, plant growth, uh, including the seedlings, actually do uh, take some time. Uh, so in here, uh, you actually see that um, we are almost done with the land preparation. We should have actually been transplanting today uh, the iceberg lettuce, which you just saw in the uh, nursery. Um, but apparently due to the cold, um, you know, the speed at which it's getting, uh, you know, growing rather is, is quite slow. Um, so that's, that's nature. You've got to make adjustments in your uh, farming plan. Uh, so we just uh, discussed with the team that um, we will be transplanting in here uh, sometime uh, next week, uh, say Thursday. But um, the land is almost uh, ready. So those are just some of the adjustments that you've got to make um, in terms of just farm planning. Uh, things don't roll uh, the way you anticipate. Weather is a big factor. Uh, you know, around May, we don't usually expect, um, you know, rainfall. But, uh, you know, uh, last week we had actually a heavy, you know, downpour. Uh, so those are some of the climate change, you know, manifestations that actually does affect your farm planning uh, and also just the growth. Uh, of uh, different you know crops so again you saw that uh, you know on our weekly you know work plan uh, we're supposed to transplant uh, uh, english cucumber in gh7 that's greenhouse number seven uh, so again here uh, in the morning we're just trying to see uh, whether the land is ready uh, you know getting things you know ready uh, so you can actually see weed free um, and make sure that we water um, you know the beds uh, in readiness for transplanting later uh, in the afternoon. Um, you know that uh, 
you know, with transplanting, you always have to do it um, in the late, you know, afternoon uh, to avoid, uh, you know, issues of, uh, you know, excess uh, evaporation uh, on the new uh, seedlings. So here we also do some, uh, you know, soil treatment for the likes of dermatodes um, and other related uh, pests. So informed by our, you know, weekly plan or wet plan for the week, um, we just showed you uh, the land preparations, you know, in readiness uh, for transplanting, uh, you know, English cucumber, which was part of our, you know, weekly plan. And so what you actually see in the background is that uh, we just finished uh, transplanting, um, you know, sticking to our plan, you know, for the week. And um, you can actually see that um, it's all done and done uh, very well. So it's very, very critical that uh, you develop those, you know, weekly plans um, and make sure that uh, you stick by them uh, unless you've got any, you know, deviations like we showed you uh, on lettuce uh, where the cold has actually slowed down, you know, the development of the uh, seedlings. So, you know, things like that that are outside your control because of nature, obviously, uh, you'd be pardoned. Uh, but anything that is within your control, make sure that uh, you stick with your daily plan and uh, make sure that uh, things are, you know, done uh, as planned. So let me just show you uh, the beautiful, you know, side of, um, you know, the seedlings that we just transplanted here uh, according to uh, our plan. Join us. So this is the general outlook uh, of our, you know, greenhouse after you know, uh, transplanting according to Sheju. Um, and uh, this is how, you know, you ought to be uh, operating at uh, farm level, uh, making sure that uh, once you plan, um, you know, things roll out uh, as planned uh, with minimal uh, variances or deviations, okay? So we'll be proceeding now to develop, you know, the plan for, for next week. And of course, some of those activities that we showed you like uh, lettuce, uh, that could not be transplanted, uh, you know, then will be uh, forwarded to uh, next week uh, until the uh, seedlings are ready for transplanting. Okay. So enjoy the scenery here. Uh, this is English cucumber production at uh, uh, Panuka Farm. So here, it's just a snippet of, uh, you know, the process that uh, we went through uh, when transplanting. Uh, that's our team in the field. Uh, so we do this uh, every uh, Friday. And just like we always do, uh, you actually see that uh, we transplanted this uh, in a zigzag uh, format. So welcome back. And um, I do hope you had a very good tour, you know, to appreciate, you know, some of the basics about, um, you know, farm planning and how we actually do it in, in practice and some of the adjustments that we actually make, you know, uh, in view of the reality on the ground. Um, so just to recap, issues of offices, um, focus for your production, uh, a weekly work plan, um, and how, you know, aspects like necessary can actually inform, um, you know, your weekly, you know, work plan, uh, field and land preparations and things like that. Um, of course, I'm speaking from the perspective of, you know, um, crop, you know, farming. Um, obviously, I think some planning aspects related to, you know, livestock could actually be nuanced, you know, uh, differently. But the basic principles, I think, do apply uh, across different, you know, agriculture, um, you know, subsectors. So remember to uh, hit that subscribe button on our Panuka YouTube channel so that you don't miss any of the juicy, you know, tidbits on uh, farming. Thank you.